Hi and welcome to another Sims 2 Deep Dive. This time around we are taking a look at Gender Preference, which is the Sims 2's version of Sexual Orientation. I'll talk about how it works in the vanilla game, how you can change a Sims Gender Preference, and how you can introduce asexuality and aromanticism into your game. Initially I wanted to include a section on polyamory, but I'm actually going to keep that for a future video on jealousy, so stay tuned for that. Before we start, I need to preface this by saying that The Sims 2 adheres very strictly to the gender binary and also doesn't distinguish between sex and gender. The game only recognizes two genders slash sexes, male and female. This of course has implications for gender preference. For example, bisexuality and pansexuality are effectively the same thing for the game. Eventually, I'd like to make a video on gender identity and gender expression in The Sims 2, with an emphasis on mods and CC to make the game more realistic and diverse in that regard. But for now, we're gonna have to stick with what the code of the game says, so two genders. With that said, let's get into it. I think a good starting point to define gender preference in The Sims 2 is the first sentence of the Sims Wiki article on gender preference. Gender preference is a feature of a sim's personality that governs which gender or genders a sim, acting autonomously, may choose to interact romantically with. So a sim can autonomously initiate romantic interactions with another sim if and only if they are attracted to that sim's gender. They will never be romantic with sims of a gender that aren't attracted to unless you ask them to. And also, a sim cannot autonomously initiate a romantic interaction with someone who's not attracted to their gender. So for example, if sim A is attracted to sim B's gender, but sim B is not attracted to sim A's gender, sim A won't be able to initiate a romantic interaction with sim B autonomously. The game will prevent it. But you can always prompt sim A to perform the interaction anyway, and the game will let you do it, of course. Then gender preference has another layer to it in The Sims 2 specifically, and that's chemistry. When a sim is attracted to a gender, they become eligible to have chemistry with the sims of that gender. In short, chemistry determines how strong the romantic attraction is between two sims, and therefore how easily a romantic relationship can develop between them. I have a whole video on chemistry that you can watch if you want to know more about that, I'll put it in the cards. And that's the extent of what gender preference does, it affects a sim's autonomy and it enables chemistry. Strangely enough, gender preference does not determine whether or not a sim is able to have a crush or be in love with someone. A sim can develop a crush or fall in love with a sim whose gender they're not attracted to. The game just doesn't take gender preference into account for that, it only checks for short-term and long-term relationship scores. In an unmodded game, the threshold for a sim to be able to get a crush is a one-sided short-term relationship of 70, and the threshold to be able to fall in love is a one-sided long-term relationship of 70. If you're not entirely happy with how gender preference works by default, you might be interested in a mod by Maris called Gender Preference, alternative way to play with. That mod does two things. The first is it changes autonomy so that a sim is able to autonomously initiate a romantic interaction with a sim they're attracted to, regardless of that sim's gender preference. And the second thing is it makes it impossible for sims to develop a crush on or fall in love with someone whose gender they're not attracted to. This makes possible a scenario where sim A is attracted to sim B, they autonomously make advances to sim B, but sim B isn't interested because they're not attracted to sim A's gender. If they happen to have high relationship scores, sim A could get a crush or fall in love with sim B, but sim B wouldn't reciprocate because they are just not into sim A's gender. It's a sad story, <laughs> sorry, but it's more realistic than what Maxis did. As far as I can tell, this mod is compatible with ATR, so you should be able to use both without any issues. If you use Mitch the Tree's Romantic Standards, you basically already have the second half of Maris's mod. The Slower Feelings mod that is part of Mitch's Romantic Standards uh, adds a check that prevents sims from crushing or falling in love outside of their gender preference. All the mods that I mentioned are linked in the description, by the way. The expression gender preference doesn't imply that sims all prefer one gender over the other, because sims can be attracted to both genders equally, or be equally uninterested in both genders. In the intro, I said that gender preference was the sims 2's version of what we call sexual orientation in real life, so why isn't it called sexual orientation in the sims 2 as well? Well, gender preference in the sims 2 and 3 differs from real life sexual orientation in important ways. 
The Sims 4 recently had an update that actually introduced sexual orientation into the game. That looks to be much closer to what sexual orientation is in real life than what gender preference had been in the Sims franchise up to that point. In the real world, a person's sexual orientation is fairly set in stone. You don't usually fall in love with people outside of the bounds of your sexual orientation, and you can't change your sexual orientation. In The Sims 2, gender preference is much more fluid. A sim can get a crush or fall in love with sims of a gender they're not attracted to, and that gender preference can change over time anyway. The game sees a sim's gender preference as two numbers between minus 1000 and plus 1000. One number is the sims score towards male sims, the other is their score towards female sims. We can visualize that as two spectrums. A positive score on one spectrum means that the sim is attracted to that gender, it's as simple as that. However, how high the exact value of that score is, is not an indication of how strong the attraction is. A sim who has a score of plus 2 towards male sims is just as attracted to male sims as someone with a score of plus 1000. Instead, how high that score is indicates how stable the attraction is. A sim with a low positive score will lose their attraction to that gender more easily than a sim with a high positive score. How can a sim lose their attraction to a gender? Just by engaging in romantic interactions with sims of the other gender. Every time a sim interacts romantically with another sim, their attraction to that sim's gender increases by 2 points, while their attraction to the other gender decreases by 1 point. I'm going to be referring to this as the plus 2 minus 1 formula. The check sim out interaction also counts as a romantic interaction, so it will have that effect too, like any other flirt. There is one exception to this, but it's definitely a bug more than a feature. The makeout interaction is not registered by the game as a romantic interaction, which means that two sims can't get a crush or fall in love from making out, nor does making out influence gender preference like other romantic cases do. Mary's made a fix for that on Mother Sims, the link is in the description. So if a sim with an initial score of plus 2 towards male sims and 0 towards female sims engages in two romantic interactions with a female sim, their gender preference changes to 0 towards males and plus 4 towards females, so they effectively lose their attraction to males. On the other hand, a sim with a score of plus 1000 towards males would have to engage in 1000 romantic interactions with female sims to lose their attraction to males. That's what I mean when I say that a high score implies a more stable attraction. It would take a remarkable amount of work on the player's part to reduce the score of 1000 to 0 through gameplay alone. Note that when two sims engage in a romantic interaction, the gender preference scores of both sims change, not just the scores of the sim who initiated the interaction. This means that you can influence the gender preferences of townies and NPCs by interacting with them romantically. And this works whether the other sim accepts the interaction or rejects it, I did test it out to make sure. But if you don't want to risk your sim being rejected, you can just use the check sim out interaction and it will apply the plus to minus one formula to the checked out sim as well. The ask do you like what you see interaction does that too, even though it's technically not a flirt. It's a little weird but oh well. The fluidity of gender preference has a sizable implication for bisexual sims. Basically, a bisexual sim can have trouble staying by in the long run because when they get a long-term partner, repeatedly having romantic interactions with that partner will cause them to become less and less attracted to the gender that their partner is not. Eventually they might lose their attraction to that gender completely, thus losing their bisexuality. If you want your bisexual sims to stay bisexual no matter what, you can download DD's No Bi Gender Preference Decrease mod, and neither of that gender preference scores will ever go down. Now, is it possible for a sim to be attracted to neither gender? Technically yes, but because of the plus 2 minus 1 formula, you can't get a sim to be attracted to neither gender through gameplay, because every time you lower one score by one, the other increases by two. So, for a sim to be attracted to neither gender, they would have to be already starting with scores of zero or less, and then you'd have to keep them from engaging in romantic interactions altogether. Besides, even if a sim has negative scores for both genders, they will still be able to roll romantic and woohoo once, so the Sims 2's gender preference system doesn't really allow for asexual and aromantic sims at all. But don't worry, we can get external help for that. Before we get to that though, let's talk about how you can determine what a sim's gender preference is and how you can change it to be exactly what you want. 
In an unmodded game, gender preference is hidden. You don't have access to sim specific scores on any of their panels, but there are ways to know. First off, when you create a sim in CAS, their gender preference will always be set to zero for both genders, except when you give them a spouse. If you give them a male spouse, they'll have a score of plus 10 towards male sims and minus 10 towards female sims, and if you give them a female spouse, they will have plus 10 towards females and minus 10 towards males. When it comes to the townies and NPCs, most of them start with a gender preference set to zero for both genders. The only exceptions I could find are the downtown NPCs known as the Diva and Mr. Big, who are both set to be straight. As for the playable pre-maids, most of them were coded to have a positive score towards at least one gender. Rocket Horse Sims compiled a list of the gender preferences of the pre-maids of all six main neighborhoods and the bin families that were introduced with expansion packs. These scores were obtained using SimPE, which is a program that we're going to talk about in a second, and SimPE doesn't use spectrums that go from minus 1000 to plus 1000. Instead, their spectrums are more imprecise and only go from minus 10 to plus 10. So when you see a score of 0.1 in SimPE or on this list, it's actually a score of 10 for the game. As you'll see, the vast majority of the pre mates are set to be straight. Three of them have a positive attraction towards both genders, Cersei Beaker, Titania Summer Dream, and Ariel Cap, and only two were coded as having a preference for sims of their own gender, Kent Cap and Jason Cleveland, which is particularly interesting in the case of Jason because he's married to a woman. Another subject has a negative score towards women, though his attraction towards men is set to zero. Pascal Curious is said to be attracted to women. But as I said, none of that needs to be taken as definitely canonical because Sims gender preferences aren't set in stone and you can of course do whatever you want in your game. When you're in game and you need to determine a Sims gender preference real quick, you can go to their relationship panel and look for chemistry bolts. Sims can only develop chemistry with Sims of a gender that they're attracted to, so if a Sim has any number of bolts, including the crossed out bolt with Sims of one gender, it means that they're attracted to that gender. As we saw, Sims can be bisexual, so they might have chemistry with Sims of both genders. Bolts might not show as soon as a Sim meets someone new, but if you have them check out their new acquaintance, the chemistry score between them will be updated. Sometimes two sims won't have any bolts with each other even though they are both attracted to the other's gender and are eligible romantic partners. That just means that they're not particularly attracted to each other personally, but also not repulsed as if they had a crossed out bolt. You can also prompt your teen and older sims to scope the room and they'll only find hot sims who belong to a gender that they're attracted to. Sometimes a sim doesn't have the option to scope room that happens when they're too young to be eligible for chemistry, but also when they don't have a positive gender preference for either gender. If you like the scope room interaction to give more specific feedback than just that sim is hot, Pick and Mix has a mod that provides that. It gives you different pop-up messages depending on the intensity of the attraction. Outside of the game, you can access and modify a sim's gender preference using SimPE. SimPE is a fan-made program that is widely used in the community. You can download it on Mother Sims. To access the Sims gender preference in SimPE, click Tools, Neighborhood, Neighborhood Browser, and select the neighborhood that the Sim lives in. Once that's loaded, go to Tools, Neighborhood, Sim Browser, and double-click the Sim you're looking for among the playables, townies, and NPCs. Don't touch the uneditables unless you know what you're doing, because making changes there could cause corruption. In the Sims description editor, go to the character tab, and that's where you'll see the two gender preference spectrums. If you'd like to change your Sims gender preference, you can type in the squares that you want, or just drag along the spectrums. Remember that the values displayed in SimPE are not the same as the values that the game works with. A 1 in SimPE is equal to a 100 for the game. That means that a 1 in CPE already indicates a pretty stable attraction that it will take 100 romantic interactions with the other gender to undo through gameplay, so don't be deceived by how small the CPE numbers look. Then when you're done, don't forget to click commit, save, and voila, your sim's gender preference has been changed. On a side note, if your CPE looks like this and you can't see text properly in some places because the background is black, you need to change your CPE's theme. Go to extra. Preferences, then click SimPE Settings, and in the theme menu, select a theme that is not Office 2003. That will fix it. Many thanks to Shifting Paradigms for sharing this tip on Tumblr. 
If you'd rather not download an external program, you can also change a sim's gender preference from inside the game using List of Gender Preference Adjuster. It's a modded object that you can download on Mod The Sims. Once it's in your downloads folder, you'll find it in the painting section. It's on the expensive side, but you can sell it right after you're done with it. It gives you the option to see your sim's current gender preference, set it to zero, and increase or decrease the score towards males, females, or both. You don't get to type in the exact values that you want as you would in SimPE, but it gives you a lot of flexibility and you can use it to set a sim to be attracted to neither gender. It was last updated in 2005, but as you can see, it still works perfectly with the Ultimate Collection. You can also view and change a sim's gender preference with the sim manipulator, although it gives you a lot less options than SimPE and this of adjuster. I'm just mentioning it real quick because a lot of people already use the sim manipulator for other things, so it might be the most convenient option for you. To see a sim's gender preference, go to miscellaneous, show hidden stats, and you'll see it right there. To change it, click miscellaneous, gender preference, and you'll be able to choose between straight, gay, and bi, which will give your sim a score of plus 250 towards the relevant gender or genders. The sim manipulator doesn't give you the option to make a sim attracted to neither gender, unfortunately, so you'll have to use one of the other methods if you want to do that. Those are useful options if you want to change the gender preference of one or a few sims, but if you want to work on the scale of a whole neighborhood, you might want to use ACR. I'm sure most of you know about ACR at this point, but in case you don't, here's a quick rundown. ACR stands for Autonomous Casual Romance. It's a set of mods originally created by two GIFs that aims to improve the way romance works in the game. ACR does a lot of things. Uh, its main feature is that it allows romantic interactions to be more autonomous, so it gives your sims more agency in their romantic lives. But it also introduces stuff like casual interactions that bypass the standard relationship requirements, risky woohoo, teen woohoo, booty calls, it gives you jealousy settings, and it lets you see and change sims gender preferences. When you put ACR in your downloads folder, it will install itself on its own the first time you load up a household. A pop-up will let you know. The way ACR works is by giving sims of the neighborhood invisible tokens that contain information about them that's going to impact their behavior. The first thing you need to do to access that information is spawn the ACR adjuster by clicking on a sim and selecting Adjust, Casual Romance, Spawn Adjuster. Then you can see the info stored on a sims token by selecting that sim, clicking the adjuster and choosing show my token stats. The line pref tells you the exact gender preference scores of your sim. In this case, Natasha has a score of 0 towards male sims and 0 towards female sims. You can also see gender preference stats by clicking gender pref, the name of your sim, and show preferences. If you want to change that sim's preference, you can do that by going to gender pref, the name of the sim, and choosing one of the options. For instance, I can make Natasha buy, and if I check her token stats, she now has scores of 500 for both genders. You'll notice that you have options for low gender preferences. What that means is the scores will be lower. For instance, if I make Natasha low buy, her scores will be lowered down to 2. As I said, this won't make her any less attracted to sims than if her scores were 500, but it will make it much easier for her to lose her attraction to one gender if she starts interacting romantically with sims of the other gender. Unless you have DD's fix for bisexual attraction, that is, in which case neither of her gender preference scores will ever go down. The limitations of ACR here are that you can't type in the exact scores that you want, as you can with SimPE, and also you can't make a sim attracted to neither gender, as you can with SimPE and with List Loves Adjuster. The real strength of ACR on the gender preference front is that it enables you to macromanage the whole neighborhood. First off, you can see your neighborhood gender preference stats by going to Gender Pref, Hood, Show Hood Census. There you have the percentages of straight, gay, bi, and, let's say, undetermined male and female sims in your neighborhood. When you check your HUD stats on a fresh neighborhood, as is the case here, the majority of the sims will have no attraction to either gender, because most townies and NPCs start with their gender preferences set to 0, zero. The sims who are straight, gay, or bi are the playables who are already in a relationship, or who at least were pre-coded to have the gender preferences that they have. But here everyone is straight, except Natasha, who we just made bisexual. 
If you want to randomize the gender preferences of everyone in the neighborhood, go to gender pref, hood, and run randomizer. Before you do that though, you might want to change the percentage of gay and bi sims that you want to aim for. If you run the randomizer directly without adjusting the gay and bi percentages, it will use the default percentages which are 10% gay, 10% bi, and 80% straight. Let's say you want to change the gay percentage to 25%. Click change target gay percentage and when you press play, a buy food menu will pop up. Just drag the bar up to 25. Don't look at delivery cost or total cost, only the food cost number is the one you're concerned with. Click OK, then back to gender preference herd. Click adjust buy percentage. Say you want to up that up to 50%. Again, only look at food cost, that's all that matters, and set it to 50. Click OK and then you can run the randomizer and it will take into account the percentages that you just set. So go to gender pref, herd and run randomizer. ACR will ask you if you want to randomize only the sims who are undetermined, only townies and NPCs or the whole herd. Whatever you choose, sims who are already in a relationship will not have their gender preference altered so that nobody suddenly stops being attracted to their partner. Let's say you want to randomize the whole herd, meaning all the townies, NPCs and playables who aren't already in a relationship. Then you can choose whether you want the randomized preferences to be high or low, so either fairly stable or more easily changeable. Choose whichever you want and ACL will do its thing. Then you can check the results by showing the herd census again. Now you can see how the percentages have changed and nobody in the neighborhood was left with preferences set to none. If you're finding that this distribution doesn't match the gay and bi percentages that you entered as well as you'd like, you can run the randomizer again until you're happy with the results. The fact that nobody is left with a preference set to none means that everybody is attracted to at least one gender. The problem with this is that it kind of erases the potential for asexual aromantic sims, which I think is unfortunate. It would be nice if we could set a percentage of sims who are attracted to neither gender, but since we can't, we have to use SimPE or List of the Adjuster on individual sims for that. With that said, ACR is still really useful obviously, and 2 Jeffs and everyone else who worked on it definitely deserve recognition for making it. I can't go over everything that it does in detail in this video for the sake of staying on topic, but if you want to know more, the links I put in the description under the ACR heading should help you. The first one is a direct download link to the latest version of ACR, which is ACR2. And the second one leads to the archived page where ACR was published originally. Do not install ACR itself from that page, it's an outdated version. What is useful on that page is the documentation. Since it's the documentation that was made for the first ACR, it's not perfectly accurate to ACR2, but it's still much better than nothing at all. To my knowledge, there is no official updated documentation going around for ACR2, but please correct me if I'm wrong. If the documentation looks daunting, Pleasant Sims made a video and wrote a guide on how she sets up her ACR. Those should be more digestible. And if you're more comfortable with Portuguese, you're in luck because Boring Bones recently wrote a detailed up-to-date guide on ACR in Portuguese, and you can download ACR from there as well. If you are interested in a lighter version of ACR, SimGeekle Girl made an edited version that leaves most features out. There's no proper documentation on it as far as I could find, but the main thing is that it still has autonomous risky woohoo and try for baby. From the bit of testing that I did, it also lets you set gender preferences, both for individual sims and herd wide. It still allows you to casual woohoo, both for adults and for teens. The morning after pill still works, but birth control and the this sim can get pregnant toggle don't do anything. Also, if you set jealousy with the hood wide global override or with the lot override, it works, but if you set jealousy on an individual sims token, it doesn't do anything. This stripped version has the upside of being compatible with similar 90s romantic standards, which regular ACR is not compatible with. Alright, now that we know how to make a sim gay, bi or straight, let's talk about how to make a sim asexual or aromantic. I think it would be a good idea to start off this section by defining what asexuality and aromanticism are. In a nutshell, asexuality is the sexual orientation of people who experience little to no sexual attraction towards other people, and aromanticism is the romantic orientation of people who experience little to no romantic attraction towards other people. 
asexual and aromantic identities exist on a spectrum. Maybe you've experienced romantic attraction in your life, but it's been rare enough or too low intensity enough that you consider the term aromantic to be a good fit for you. The asexual and aromantic spectrums are themselves part of a larger spectrum called the A-spectrum or A-spec. I've intentionally been decoupling asexuality and aromanticism this whole time because I don't want to gloss over the aromantic experience, but for a lot of people on the A spectrum, asexuality and aromanticism go hand in hand. In fact, for most people in general, romantic and sexual attraction are experienced as one and the same, so it's not surprising that some people would experience neither one nor the other. When someone says they're gay, most of the time they mean that they experience romantic and sexual attraction towards people who have the same gender as them. If you wanted to be specific, we'd say they're homosexual, homoromantic. Similarly, when someone says they're asexual, there's a chance that what they mean is that they're not attracted to anyone either sexually or romantically, technically making them asexual, aromantic. In The Sims 2, there is no distinction between romantic attraction and sexual attraction either, they're bunched up together. That's for instance reflected in the fact that, in an unmodded game, a sim needs to be in love with someone to get the option to woohoo with them, making sex inseparable from love. But for some people, sexual and romantic attractions are two different things, and you may experience one but not the other. You can be asexual but alloromantic, meaning that you don't experience sexual attraction but you do experience romantic attraction, or you can be aromantic but allosexual, meaning the reverse. This means that asexuality and aromanticism are orientations that cut through attraction to genders. You can be asexual and be romantically attracted to women, men, and or any other gender or genders. And you can be aromantic and be sexually attracted to any gender or genders as well. In the resources section of the video description, I put links to articles and videos that I found helpful to understand aspect identities. The first of those links is an article from the Asexual Visibility and Education Network that I thought was particularly enlightening. If you don't mind, I'll just read a few important quotes from it. It's specifically on asexuality that may or may not be coupled with aromanticism. An asexual person does not experience sexual attraction. They are not drawn to people sexually and do not desire to act upon attraction to others in a sexual way. Unlike celibacy, which is a choice to abstain from sexual activity, asexuality is an intrinsic part of who we are, just like other sexual orientations. Many asexual people may experience forms of attraction that can be romantic, aesthetic, or sensual in nature, but do not lead to a need to act out on that attraction sexually. Instead, we may get fulfillment from relationships without sex, but based on other types of attraction. For some asexual people, arousal is a fairly regular occurrence, though it's not associated with a desire to find a sexual partner or partners. Some may occasionally masturbate, but feel no desire for partnered sex. Other asexual people may experience little or no arousal. Both types are equally valid in identifying as asexual, as sexual orientation is about attraction and desire towards other people, rather than strictly physiological reactions. Because we don't have an intrinsic need for sex, asexual people generally do not see a lack of sexual arousal as a problem to be corrected, and if they do have a libido or experience arousal, they do not feel needs are unmet by a lack of sexual activity. Asexuality is different from medical conditions such as hypoactive sexual desire disorder. In cases of HSDD, there are underlying sexual needs that are not being met to the point of personal distress. If not experiencing arousal or suddenly losing interest in sex is distressing, it is advisable to discuss this with a medical professional. Again, the full article along with other articles and videos are in the description box. I'm taking the time to talk about this for two reasons. The primary one is that I think it's important to know these things for real life so we don't perpetuate discrimination and bigotry, but also this is the kind of information that can help us create interesting and unique sims. Everyone has their own way of playing the game, of course, but I know for myself that I want to make my sims diverse and I want to challenge myself in the process, if that makes sense. Instead of imagining what it must be like to be asexual, polyamorous, trans, or any other identity outside of my lived experience, I find it more interesting to research what exactly those experiences are like in real life. This way I can properly honor a spectrum of real lived experiences in my game. When it comes to my sims who are aliens, plant sims, zombies, etc, I'll make up some custom lore in my head if I feel like it, but when it comes to identities that exist in real life, 
I felt that it would be a shame not to take the opportunity to familiarize myself with the diversity of experiences that exist in the real world. I definitely believe that the more knowledge you have, the better the storylines that you come up with in your game will be. It's like when you write a novel, you don't want to rely on preconceived ideas and tired tropes. Reality is always going to be more complex and interesting than that, so it's a great source of inspiration to pull from. Personal tangent aside, um, how do we introduce asexuality and aromanticism into The Sims 2? In the case of a sim who is both asexual and aromantic, the first thing we can do is set their gender preference scores down to stable negative numbers, so they don't have chemistry or try to flirt with other sims. But in the case of sims who can be either romantically or sexually attracted to others, it doesn't really make sense to do that. We should give them a positive score towards the gender or genders that they feel that attraction towards. The real issue now is that your asexual sims can still roll with who wants and your aromantic sims can still roll romantic ones like flirt, go and date and all that. And they can still get crushes and fall in love. But as always, wonderful people in the community have made mods that we can use to fix that. To make a sim asexual, I present to you Mitch the Tree's asexual ACR plugin and trait. This beauty can prevent a sim from rolling woohoo once. It exists in two versions. If you have ACR, you can use the ACR plugin version of the mod. This works both with the complete ACR2 set or with SimGiggle Girl's stripped ACR. Once you've downloaded it, what you have to do to activate it on a sim is select that sim, click the ACR adjuster, go to sim settings, autonomy, woohoo is allowed. Once you click it, woohoo is allowed will change to woohoo is not allowed meaning that the sim won't ever autonomously initiate a woohoo with anyone. With the asexual plugin in your downloads folder, the sim is now also enabled to roll woohoo once. If you don't have ACR, you can download the trade version. If you don't know, a few years ago, a mod by the name of Exacodon by Pyramid originated the trades project, basically making trades for the sims too. If you're interested in that, I left two links in the description, one to the traits that Hexagonal by Pyramid converted from The Sims 3, and one to the trait mods that you can download for those traits to have any effect. You'll have explanations as to how that works on those pages, and Cozy Pixels also made a video on the topic that I left a link to as well. But if you just want the asexual trait, you don't need to worry about all that. You just need two files, the trait from Midge's post and the trait main file that you can get from the traits project post link here. You need this file for any trait to work. So on this page, just click download, then either of these. In this case, it doesn't matter. You'll get a zip file with all the converted Sims 3 traits, the trait main file among them, and a collection file. You can delete the collection file and all the traits so they don't clog your catalog for no reason. You just need to keep trait main and to put it in your downloads with the asexual trait. Then in your game, you'll find the asexual trait in buy mode under miscellaneous miscellaneous. You can buy it and place it somewhere. And then in live mode, put it into the inventory of the sim that you want to be asexual. And there you go, this sim is now enabled to roll with who wants. If you want to make a sim aromantic, you might be interested in Dread Pirate's aromanticism project. It's a bit more complicated than the asexual trait, but it also does quite a bit more. It's also a trait, but it's associated with a customizable set of mods, if you will. What's required for it to work is the trait made file from the traits project, another mod from Hexagonal by Pyramid called Easy Inventory Check, and the aromantic trait itself. Once you have that, the trait is in your game, but it doesn't do anything yet. For it to do something, you need to pick at least one of the mods that Dread Pirate made to go with the trait. The wand disablers make it impossible for sims with the trait to roll romantic wands. Disable Attraction is a mod that makes sims with the aromantic trait ineligible for chemistry. Slower Feelings Edit prevents sims with the aromantic trait from falling in love or getting crushes. Be careful with this one, since it's a mod based on Mitch the Tree's Slower Feelings mod, it also has the features of that mod. Those features are 1. Sims can't fall in love with someone whose gender they're not attracted to, but also 2. Sims must pass a probability check proportional to their chemistry to gain crushes or fall in love. That means that Sims won't automatically get a crush and fall in love with someone that they have a 70 over 70 relationship with from a single romantic interaction. I personally love this, but since it makes coupling sims up more difficult, some players may find it frustrating. If you don't want that, you might not want to get this one. 
Also, something I realized while testing that might not be obvious is that if you have this mod, your aromantic sims can't be jealous, at least not under the default Maxis jealousy settings. With standard Maxis jealousy, a sim can become jealous as soon as they have a crush, but since lower feelings edit makes aromantic sims unable to get a crush or fall in love, they also become unable to be jealous which from what I've read isn't entirely accurate to every aromantic person's experience. Remove crush love requirements removes the requirement to have a crush or be in love to have certain romantic interactions show up in the pie menu. For example, in the vanilla game, you can't ask a sim to initiate a makeout or a woohoo with a sim that they aren't in love with. This mod removes this type of limitation, not only for the sims who have the aromantic traits, but for all sims. Which, to be honest, is pretty realistic. Um, I mean, if you use ACR, you basically already have that with the casual interactions. But with this mod, the relationship score requirements remain, so your sims will still need to have a high enough short-term and long-term relationship with the target sim for the interactions to be available. This also unlocks the propose engagement interaction, which is normally only available when the sim proposing is in love. A small issue I found is that it doesn't unlock propose marriage after that. But it's not the biggest deal because engaged aromantic sims can still get married with a wedding arch, so that's nice. Keep in mind that this mod only unlocks the interactions, but it doesn't change anything about whether or not the interactions will be accepted. So for instance, your aromantic sim will be able to initiate a makeout without being in love, but if the sim on the receiving end is also aromantic and not in love, the game will still prevent them from accepting. What you need to enable acceptance from aromantic sims is redefining love. Redefining love changes the relationship requirements for acceptance of romantic interactions for sims who have the aromantic trait. Interactions that previously required to have a crush to be accepted will now only require to be friends, and interactions that require to be in love will now only require to be best friends. So for instance, sims with the aromantic trait will accept to make out as long as they are best friends with the other sim. This mod comes in three versions, and you can only have one. If you don't use traits beside the aromantic and asexual traits, just get the original version. If you use other traits from the trace project, you might want to pick the second or third version, depending on whether you want the disabled attraction mod that I mentioned earlier. You can read about what respect commitment or not is in the documentation of Mitch the Tree's romantic standards, which you can find through this link. So if you want the whole aromantic project set, you should end up with 11 mods from Dread Pirate Post, plus the trait main file, plus the easy inventory check. So that's 13 files in total. In game, you'll find the aromantic trait in build mode under miscellaneous miscellaneous, and you can buy it and put it in your aromantic sims inventories. If you'd like to make a sim aromantic but they have a pre-existing crush or they're already in love with someone, you can clear the crush and love flags with the sim manipulator. To do that, select the aromantic sim, then on the sim manipulator click relationships, clear flags, crush, the name of the other sim, me towards them. Then you can do the same thing for the love flag, relationships, clear flags, love, the name of the other sim, me towards them. You'll see that your error sim has lost their crush and love, while the other sim still has them. As long as you have the slower feelings edit mod, your aero sim won't ever get a crush or fall in love again. Last thing I'd like to say on this topic, since I know that a lot of people enjoy family gameplay, if you have a sim who's completely asexual, aromantic, it doesn't mean that they have to stay single all their life. They can stay single, nothing wrong with that, but in real life, aero's people sometimes choose to get into committed partnerships. You could definitely have an A-Rise couple enjoy your life together under the same roof, with the same level of emotional attachment to each other as your other couples have. The only difference is that they won't necessarily be woohooing or engaging in romantic interactions. If you want to know more, I recommend you research queer platonic relationships. You could have them adopt kids or even have biological children. In real life, asexual people sometimes choose to have sex, maybe to have a biological child, or just to please an allosexual partner. As always, when it comes to any kind of relationship, what's important is informed consent, which is a matter of personal choice. So there you go, that was all the information that I was able to gather on gender preference and how to tailor your game to your liking in that regard. I hope that all your questions on gender preference have been answered. If I forgot something or made a mistake somewhere, please let me know. 
As I mentioned, for A-Spec identities, real-life sexual orientations exist on multiple spectrums, and I don't mean to present this video as the ultimate guide to making your game as diverse as the real world is, but if you're interested in reflecting those aspects of real life in your game, hopefully this video helped you towards that goal. And that's gonna be it from me. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!